Hey, welcome back to the Build Show. Steve Basic Architect here. We're down at our uh, new project here. And today, we're going to talk about floor framing. So, you see behind me, we are using the iJoy system. It's by Roseburg. They're one of the manufacturers of iJoyce. For those of you that aren't familiar with iJoyce, it's basically, they're like mini trusses. There's top cords, bottom cords, and they have an OSB web. But today, we're going to talk about deflection and strength and just what I would consider framing comfort. Now, I know it's a little bit of a stretch to put comfort in with framing, but you can see here we have single joists. Now, this is pretty typical. It's a single joist, 16 inches on framing, but here, notice, we go to double joists, right? So why did I double these up? You can see, as you pan out that way, that the double joists only go for about half of the floor frame. Now, the reason for that is in the middle of where these double joists are is the kitchen island. And one of the things that I like to provide to my uh, clients is, is this kind of uh, framing comfort, I call it, in such that you have the kitchen island, a couple of years or a year from now, they're gonna have their Christmas party, you have the kitchen island, everybody's got their wine glasses out there, there's a bunch of people standing around that island. Someone walks across the floor and everybody's wine glass shakes. Now, everybody's wine glass is shaking not because the floor is about to fail, it's just that the deflection for that floor system isn't as stiff as I would like it to be for this, what I call framing comfort. So I double up the joists in a lot of areas. If we're doing large format tile, sometimes there's another reason to do it. But typically we do it, you know, always under the kitchen island there where we go from the single to that double frame. It gives it a little bit more stiffness. And, you know, our clients really love the idea that we're thinking this far ahead and we're thinking about their Christmas parties when we're doing the framing plan. So, anyways, let's jump back to the studio. We'll break up the framing plan and we'll continue the discussion. Hey, everybody. So, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, just started framing that project. So, uh, it's uh, exciting stuff when a project just gets started like that. You get, a, uh, I don't know, 12 months ahead of us on that project. So, we're going to have a lot to see on that one as we follow along. But uh, today, we got Big Red. We got the floor framing. Uh, layout here and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that framing comfort concept in the uh, floor frame so let's uh grab big red and have at it all right everybody so we uh grabbed part of the floor framing plan we didn't need the whole thing uh, just a kind of area of discussion here maybe a little peripheral um, section of it but you can see the section, I was standing probably somewhere right around there when I shot the video. And you can see basically this is the engineered band joist there. Joists go across. We have a beam line there. And then we have the other side of the building over there. So you can see the spans are, I don't know, it's probably a 60-40 split here. Um, and that's just how they worked out. We have a bunch of uh, spaces down in the basement here that are larger and then a bunch of utility stuff there with a small hallway so kind of uh, sets those columns up to be in that uh, wall line but anyways talking about floor framing plans here and notice that here we have a single joist here we have a single joist and then here we have a double here we have a double and double and you can see these doubles go for a little bit here. In there. And then we're back to singles. And the singles carry on in both directions. And notice that when we go from the single to the double, I give the dimension 16 inches there. So it's letting the framer know that those doubles are now centered on the common layout and not the joist. And the other thing, piece of information, you can see I have a box here that is drawn in. And that's hatched out. 
And basically what that is, is explained right there, area of kitchen island above. So basically, I'm just letting the framer know that we're putting the double joists basically underneath the kitchen island and we're kicking it out, you know, 16 inches plus on both sides there to really create a little stiffness in this area. And part of it is, is just the sheer weight of the island. But like I said, the more important thing is that, um, you know, our clients are having a Christmas party a year or so down the road and a bunch of people are gathered here. There's a bunch of wine glasses on the island. Someone goes walking across the kitchen and all the wine glasses are shaking, right? We don't want that. We don't, you know, we're, I'm not certainly not in fear of the floor caving in, but we don't want to have those wine glasses uh, shaking and rattling on the island, too. So we always want to, you know, express the uh, idea that it's a very well-built house, performance-wise, structurally, and aesthetically. So kind of that three-legged stool that uh, we strive to build on. Now, I chose to go with a double joist here. There's a number of ways that you can increase the performance of the floor frame there. Um, you know, first of all, the, the initial layout would suggest that it's just a, a typical eye joist. And a typical eye joist is, it's got, sometimes these are solid sawn, and sometimes they're LVL, depends on who's making the eye joist. They get their name because of their shape, right? Shaped like an eye. And like I said, those are either solid sawn or LVL cords. So the cords are the pieces that run down the eye joist. And then you have this member here, which is the web member. And the web member is usually OSB and eye joists. Um, so the way that we can improve this system is we can simply make the eye joists deeper. They become stronger in their depth because when you're calculating the strength of an eye joist, it ends up, uh, it's the depth gets cubed in the uh, calculation. So it's not a linear um, improvement um, from a, say, a 12-inch eye joist to a 14-inch eye joist to a 16-inch eye joist. The 16-inch eye joist is significantly stronger than the 14-inch eye joist, than, which is significantly stronger than the 12-inch eye joist. But we can't really go through here and say, hey, we're going to put in 12-inch here, and then we'll switch to 14. We don't have that luxury because we have um, basement space underneath this with ceilings, and the ceilings want to be the same height and be constant there. So the idea of just simply making the joists deeper isn't really a solution, a partial solution. It's an kind of an overall solution so that when we lay these out, they work very well. But uh, as far as the little partial section here, we have to seek an alternative route. So these are at 16 inches on center. The other way to get added strength is to go from the 16 inches on center to a 12 inch on center framing. And so increasing that proximity um, means that you have more joist per linear foot of floor frame. So basically in a four foot stretch, you're going to go from three eye joist to four eye joist. So you pick up that additional 25% there. And so that will make the floor stiffer. So we could have done that too. We could have gone in here and just made them all 12 inches. Um, but what I typically do in this case is I just keep the 16 inch common layout, but underneath that island, I double these up and I kick out a couple extra on the ends. That gives me this kind of area of, let's call it increased strength. 
and the increased strength translates to, you know, less deflection. And less deflection is simply just a way of saying it's a stiffer floor, stiffer, stronger floor. So there you have it. It's a pretty simple technique. I pretty much do it on every house. You know, most of the projects that we work on here are custom houses that I want our clients to feel good about the house that they are uh, purchasing and building. And uh, we want to make sure we got all our bases covered. And so that's a kind of a standard floor framing layout detail for us. So there you have it. Everything you need to know about framing comfort. All right, there you have it. Big red. Done. Time to go to bed. Anyways, hopefully uh, you learned a little something about there, about laying out floor framing, joist sizing, joist deflection, all that good stuff, and what I call framing comfort. So, um, yeah, always good. Clients appreciate us uh, worrying about every one of their little needs, um, even when we're not going to be in the house and we're long gone and uh, they're living there. We still take care of them. So, anyways, if you're looking for more, you can find me on Instagram, Steve Basic Architect. You can find me right here on the Build Show Network. I have literally, uh, I don't know, a hundred or so, over a hundred videos, and uh, I have a handful of colleagues out there that are throwing it up, and we have thousands of videos here to watch. So uh, go catch them all. A lot of great stuff. Very wide spectrum of information. Um, all great stuff. I uh, respect and appreciate all of my colleagues here on the Build Show. So it's uh, good information. So go check it out. Lastly, if you want even more of me, you can find me on the Unbuild It podcast. Yes, we're up on YouTube. You can watch the antics of Peter Yost, Jake Bruton, and myself as uh, we pretty much talk everything building. So you can catch us there on Build It podcast. So. Anyways, until next time, long live our buildings.